I saw a lot of statement made by certain individuals, some really in favor, some against, about the rule issued against the attorney at law Nagananda. I'm, and some, some people really want me to tell, I mean, they don't know exactly what had happened. They want to know what really went wrong. I'm not going to talk about the judgment. But I will tell you the background information, why, what went wrong and what is the reason for this rule. That is my duty. You can come to any conclusion thereafter. What is this? In the judgment, you can see there is a motion published along with the judgment. Motion dated, motion, not the motion, uh, affidavit dated 26th of uh, November 20, 2015. What is that? What made Nagananda to file that motion in the Supreme Court. I am going to discuss the facts about the case. I believe that most of you will be able to understand the background once I reveal all this. In uh, in 2000, uh, 2000, no, I mean 1977, 78, after the general election, a special select committee was appointed to inquire into the, the election process and also franchise. Uh, it was headed by PAC, that is the Parliamentary Special Select Committee. It was headed by Ranasinghe Premadasa. He was the, then the Prime Minister. And there were about 12 members. Dinesh Gunadana was there. Then Sarat Muttuttuegama was there. Then Div Gunasekar was there. There were uh, respectable people, including uh, Atulat Mudali. The final outcome of this uh, select committee proceedings went on for about 6-8 years for the 14th amendment to the constitution. It was stable uh, in the, on the in, first time it was produced before the parliament on 4th of May 1988 but prior to that prior to that it was sent to the Chief Justice by J.R. Javadana, which was already published by uh, the by the government printer, but J.R. Javadana sent to sent something completely different, a typewritten note to the Chief Justice with a letter. And the Parliament Select Committee 14th Amendment approved document, Ranasinghe Premadasa very clearly says it's a verbatim of the Select Committee proceedings. 14th Amendment. In that, there was a provision which is now called 99A, Article 99A, that is to introduce a national list consisting 29 members, learned people with eminence. This is the very word used there. For them to, they don't want to come to politics, therefore, the idea was to encourage such people to enter the parliament through the national list. When this document, uh, without publishing it in the public in the gazette or placed on the order paper of the parliament, it was referred to the president by J President J. J. to the chief justice with a letter, with a letter, and asking requesting the court to confirm whether that particular bill is consistent or inconsistent with the provisions of the constitution. They, they, there are certain clauses that if for such clause, if there is a violation of such clauses, if it's an entrenched provision that cannot be passed by the parliament. For example, appointment of elected representatives to the parliament is an entrenched provision. The parliament has no power to do any change there. If they want to do that, they must come before the people. Franchise also 4a and 4e also entrenched provision article 3 says about the sovereignty which includes all this however jarja vadana what he did he changed the whole thing the 99a he included a clause there which say even the defeated candidates can be considered through the nationalists which is not there in the in the bill therefore when the bill without 
publish it uh, uh, say although there was it was a constitutional amendment it was not published in the gazette in the in the gazette therefore three or four people i believe mrs bandarnayaka dinesh gunadana nath amrakond and leela tunga four people challenged it in the supreme court they say no this cannot be done like this we don't know anything about it it is not gazetted and uh, i we check it in with the uh, publication bureau and the government printer we don't know anything about it therefore this was this happened on 18th of april 1988 but on the same day the supreme court of sri lanka ruled that the 99a appointment of defeated candidates to the parliament that particular provision does not violate the entrenched provisions that is article 3 sovereignty in the people for one the appointment of elected I mean, election of uh, members of parliament by the people for a franchise. The Supreme Court held that there is no violation of the constitution. What happened thereafter? Then, on fourth of May, for the first time, for the first time, this bill was placed on the order paper of the parliament. third it was placed on the order paper fourth the third reading at the third reading prime minister then prime prime minister ranasinga prabhadasa said this is completely wrong i am aware that there are two bills where at the bill that i present to this house there is no provision whatsoever for the defeated candidates to enter parliament i know there is another bill which say that even the defeated candidates can enter the parliament through the national list he said according to the bill that i present which was approved by the psc select committee there is no such provision that citizens of this country when they go to vote they know who are the people in the nomination papers or they know who are the people in the national list therefore so they have option to they know very well the people will know each party according to the number of votes they get they have a chance they will have a chance to appoint certain number of people through the national list that was the arrangement what happened when in the year 2000 sorry in the year 2015 when the national list through national list 12 people appoint defeated candidates 12 people were appointed There was a request made to Nagaland by Reverend uh, Madhula Ve Sobita. I was in England that time. Matthew me kai la balan Matthew me mukad me vendya na paradi. So he warned me to look into this. He said this is a bloody fraud. So I returned to Sri Lanka and wanted to conduct an investigation as to why how it happened, because it's an entrenched provision which cannot be taken away without the. without obtaining a mandate from the people please do understand entrench means parliament 225 cannot do anything so during so when this uh, un, uh, investigation was undertaken i managed to discover i employed a man at the supreme court registry and found out the entire case record with the greatest difficulty jr jawadana's letters into the chief justice then uh, um no no type written not sent to him then leela tunga one mr leela tunga his affidavit and also the judgment delivered by the supreme court so i made a request to the court asking for a certified copy of the entire case record because i wanted to challenge all these 12 member appointment because they appointment because it absolutely illegal constitution say with any bill amendment to the constitution will not become law unless the due process as set out in article 82 is followed 82 six says due process has not been followed irrespective of the article 80 and 124 which say the speaker once it is once the speaker certify a bill it cannot be challenged in the supreme court because there is no judicial review in this country therefore no one can challenge in the supreme court but 826 very clearly say if the due process has not been followed it does not any bill approved or made law unlawfully that is to amend the constitution will not become law shall the court shall not interpret that it has been enacted lawfully that is what the 826 say therefore i wanted to challenge it i asked justice ripawan to issue all this paperwork it was refused 
because the, he know the reason. I can I understand you also understand why that particular document was re not released. Then it went down to Chandra Ekanayaka, then uh, Priyasad Depp. Finally, it reached uh, Justice uh, uh, who um, Eva Vanasundar who made this endorsement. She said. Communications between the President and the Chief Justice and the observations of the court, which are communicated to the President and the Speaker, need not be disclosed to Mr. Kodituaku. The request contained in the, in the motion is therefore refused. She refused to release this information. But this matter was initiated purely in the public interest. So therefore, collecting all this information, so I have gone through the paperwork, but the court refused to give a certified copy. I made another request to Chief Justice to issue a certified copy of this. Some with the greatest difficulty, I managed to get this information, everything, and file action in order to rectify it because the court had the power to rectify it. So you understand that. Now you know very well the whole thing in the judgment you will see. So, it's up to you to decide whether the ruling is right or wrong or whatever. In the judgment itself, when the Chief Justice refused to release this uh, information and, and, and to appoint a fuller bench, after I, with the greatest difficulty after obtaining all this information, I had to make a request to the Chief Justice. That is, since he refused at the very beginning, refused to release the case record, then again refused to release the um, what do you mean the appoint a fuller bench? I had to make a request to appoint a, a bench, independent bench. That is the very reason for this rule, issuance of rule. So you now you know, I am not going to comment on that, whether it's right or wrong, whether it is proportionate or not, all that is up to you. So, so this is the background of the case. This is why this rule was issued. So I have to tell you because the learned people in this country, in the, those who live abroad, they don't know exactly what went wrong. So the whole purpose of this uh, this uh, statement to you is to make them understand the background, why this rule was issued, the background, and you can decide whatever. I, some people ask me why, what kind of action that you intend to take, that will be done in the in due course. I hope that you understand the background. Who are the people responsible? President J.R. Javadan is directly responsible. Who, who, complete, who sent a completely different version of the 14th Amendment to the Constitution to the President. And also, the legislature also directly responsible. The Speaker shouldn't have allowed this. E.L. Senak shouldn't have allowed it. He knew that what was, the, what was approved by the Select Committee, the Parliamentary Select Committee, and the bill sent to the the typewritten note to send to the Chief Justice was completely different. He knew that. And the judiciary also knew that the whole thing violated the Article 3, that is sovereignty in the people, which include the legislative power, executive power, and the judicial power. And also 4A and 4E. 4A is the power of the people. That is the part of the sovereignty to elect their representatives. And 4E, franchise. I believe you now have some idea as to what went wrong. Thank you.